Welcome to our tutorial today on creating grayscale oil painting from start to finish and I've already started sketching out my composition on the canvas which is going to be a teapot and I used um, a light pencil to draw this in and will be a guide for my painting. I'm I've already mixed my uh, colors from extreme uh, dark all the way to the white that I'll be using. So there's seven different colors that I'll be using from the extreme shadow all the way to the white. I um, already mixed everything that I needed so that I can already have that ready to go so I can create all the different different shades um, that I'll be doing. And here is the picture that I'll be referencing from this is from evolve and um, this is the teapot on level number four that I've been doing to get my art skills way way up remember um, the lighter shades will be used but I use the dark in the beginning using my large block to, to brush to um, block this and to create the forms of the painting and then I end up worrying about all the details and stuff a little bit farther on and stuff as I progress I'll start adding details um, as I go and I'm paying attention to the light source of where everything's coming from which is coming from this direction and um, creating a composition that's going to be really beautiful and when I have the grayscale, I use a little bit of oil here, which I've got ready to go and everything. So let's uh, let's get going here. I'm going to start on this teapot first. And I'm going to do extreme here and extreme here on either side of the painting. You always part the shadows first, which is something that um, I found is incredibly important um, because you have a tendency to kind of look at them but not always paint them in. It's kind of an unconscious adjustment or something that I didn't learn in the last few years that have created my paintings to really be um, pretty different and pretty pretty lovely. I actually really love doing the grayscale because you can really work and create a beautiful piece considering how colorful my artwork really is going back to kind of something simple as a grayscale painting can create really beautiful work but sometimes just give you a little bit of that contrast that we sometimes miss when we're doing our color art which I do beautiful, colorful goddess paintings and that because I'm still looking for my voice. I've been trying all kinds of different things because I'm finding even if I like painting something, doesn't mean the public, you guys really love it, that you'll want to purchase it and put it on your wall.
I've already got my gradient paint already mixed up, ready to go, so I have to just go forward with creating the gradient. And that would have helped me four years ago when I first started painting, having that understanding of what the gradient does, which creates the 3D, how the light source, where it's coming in from, versus what I had been trying to do, which created pretty not so great women's faces and stuff, and I was so determined that that was what I wanted to, that I decided to go into the Evolve program. This is the last part of the eight paintings that I will be finishing up on. So I've got, I'll be doing little tutorials on, on this. Since I noticed that one of my other ones that I did a tutorial on, a lot of people really liked that painting, and that was a particular that was part of the color part of this program that I'm almost finished with. And then I could sign up for another 2000. continue with the program it'll be kind of nice to feel like you're going to continue moving forward with what you're doing because this has been kind of a different different process it's been a big struggle to stay doing the art with all of the kind of crappy stuff that the art industry does it's all about putting you in these really big shows that you pay a lot of money for and then being told over and over that eventually you'll people will come back and purchase and stuff and it was kind of a heartbreak for all of us at that time and even though I was one of the top sellers of the show out of the 200 people that were probably there, only five of us sold. And all of the stuff that was under 100 bucks, I was the only one that sold something within the 2000 range. But when you're an artist, you expect bigger, you know, bigger sales that way. And that was a little bit, a lot of people were impacted by by that The other day I was creating some fun art just to give myself a little bit of a break from you know traditional paintings and stuff and ended up spilling a bunch of alcohol because I clean my brushes with the alcohol.
been watching some of the Jason Momoa. It's kind of nice to see somebody actually buy and purchase artwork. I was thinking about doing a really pretty painting of him on a motorcycle since we're both in the motorcycles. Kind of nice to see that, you know. People are still purchasing artwork because what I'm experiencing is the younger generations. People that are, you know, 25, 30, they want everything to be on computers and missing the understanding of the, the hand part of it, being able to, to discern and try to figure out what's gonna make this a really beautiful painting versus, you know, everything being digitally done nowadays because you're really missing out on that experience of getting paint and screwing up and you know, being able to watch the process of what we're doing, you know, that brings uh, everything to unfold right before your eyes, you know. And the more and more we do that, maybe we can get people to appreciate the arts again. Because with the new Earth stuff coming up, we're kind of painting the new future. So it's not coming from that place of what happened right before the wars and stuff the last time. We're creating beauty, music, and all of that because we get thrown into wars that we don't have any control over. And just people end up, you know, they don't put the wars that we're going through like they did with Vietnam and other stuff that I grew up with when I was little. When you're working in paint too, you need to figure out too, it's like um, when you're working with this, it's like when this is an extreme light of the, you know, the way the light is coming in onto the teapot, you use the paint from that part of the spectrum. And when you're doing the extreme darks, which is considered shadow, then you make sure that you're doing it from the shadow part of the spectrum of the paint. And this is something that you don't see with digital art all the time, even though I still do it. Sometimes I like to play with something a little bit more Make my gradient here so that you can tell that it's rounded here. And here you do add mixtures of the two paints so that you can create that gradient.
put it here on the front of the teapot. This eh. reflection. It's a lighter. The front here. Having your paints pre-mixed, creating the uh, different um, aspects of the teapot will create some really cool, you know, aspects of the painting. I have two references that I use. Kind of close up.
these technique, technique, techniques had created me to slow down a lot because initially I was painting too quickly and what was happening is way too much um, having to go back and redo everything was a nightmare having to go back and clean up all the edges and things that I thought were looking pretty good until you take a class that shows you that it's not good <laughs> Have a lot of cat hair in the house, fortunately.
the only one spot in the painting that has an extreme white or two. So if you're kind of a person that you're a beginner or you've been experienced in painting and stuff, let me know in the comments on if you are love to do the grayscale to kind of just give you a really good perspective. that you like to do. When I started doing the Evolve class, I was really able to get in here and do some detail work, really learn how to make the pictures look 3D, which I was not getting, had not gotten before. And, you know, when you're trying to paint a face, it's kind of pivotal. <laughs> it's really pivotal to be able to do that, to create that 3D look, which I do now have, because I really want to paint the, but I'm going to, you know, be able to get into doing some other kind of different details and, and stuff, because I'm still trying to find my voice. I really like doing that kind of um, fractured look on the back of the painting. Maybe I could do stuff like that on certain places and then do the detail work around maybe the roses or something, you know, to that effect.
Don't forget to, when you're working, doing some work and stuff, to breathe. It's really helpful to be breathing. How to hold your breath. It's just like chatting on the video and stuff. I be breathing just fine, but sometimes we hold our breath when we're working on close proximity of something. I've only got the, um, I don't have any more grayscale paintings. Those have all sold. What I was doing before. So here I'm working on this. I'm not sure what time it is. 38th. Well, what I'm going to do is finish this up for the next day to inspire and educate you even more. So grab your brushes and let's get painting next time so you can actually do something. Don't forget to like this page and subscribe and comment. And um, for more art tutorials and inspiration. And thanks for so much watching today. And then tomorrow I will do more of the upload of the rest of the painting that I finished. Because, you know, when you're doing the detail part of stuff, you end up taking your time and being able to process stuff and cleaning the edges and doing stuff like that. But sometimes it's always good to kind of bring in that background a little bit so that you can get those details down and and all of that all right peace to you love and serenity for the day peace to you don't forget to like and subscribe and if you do want to look at anything on my website it's lisa marie lisa marie pro artist and have a fantastic rest of your day guys bye bye